Hello, ladies and gents. It's time for Hell Roses versus my XMG. The winner will decide the fifth spot for the DreamHack European qualifiers, and they will join LDLC, Planet Key Dynamics, ESC, and Penta. Yep, that's yeah, that's all four. And uh, they will join that list of uh, of teams. And uh, it's going to be a big fight, though. Hell Roses just finally managed to finish their match against Alternate, and they did manage to win 2-0, uh, finally finishing it up on cash. But we are going to be moving into an overpass, and this is uh, a pick from uh, Mike SMG following. It's going to be Mirage. And uh, Mike SMG is showing uh, pretty good games on here, previously, and Hellraisers are always shaky, who knows, and I'm awkwardly not introducing James, he's just sitting there like a plonker. Hello James, welcome to the show. You're Hello, back. finally, glad to be here tonight, how are you? <laughs> um, I'm full I'm, of energy. I'm great, seems. I'm delirious I as seems. usual, I think that's my constant state. Markloff left clicking there. Yeah, well, you've got to keep it fresh. <laughs> Fair enough. Alright, so is this the final? Yes. Is this the final? Yes. Is this the final? Yes. So, to those of you who are like, Hellraisers, they played yesterday and they lost against Penta. And uh, to those of you who saw Mike and Dilu's as well, probably like, why? How is it they still in the tournament? What's going on? Well, I have an explanation for you. Because, because there are five spots and not four, they, the teams that made it to the round of eight got another life, basically, they got another chance. And uh, so, James, what have you been doing all day? I have been at the uh, Milan game week. You were there without me. Were you playing loads of games? I was there while you were asleep. Were you playing games? I was setting up. We were waiting for... It was a fun day. We uh, spent most of it without, without power. Things like power, tables. What do you do without power? Do you play Scrabble? Not, not a whole lot, to be honest, <laughs> when, when you're at an expo about power. But uh, yeah, we've been setting up machines, testing intertubes. What about some card games? Were there not card games for you on well, board for you to there play? Were, there was some work to be done. Did you have candles? I played, I played one round of deathmatch on the internet. If there's no power, where was the light coming from? They, had, they had like power from the ceiling, but not power to the, in, to the booths. That's a bit weird. Yeah, indeed. But, um, Sounds like someone messed up. <laughs> yeah, but we got there, we got there in the end. So, uh, Excellent. I was out there doing, doing lots of work. So... Um, is this the pistol round um, here? So you were at Milan Kingsweet. Okay, we're actually into the pistol, so yeah. enough banter for now. All right, uh, as we do load up the game sound, there we, uh, there we go. All right, so we do have uh, oh, we've got an aggressive push here from from our friend, Freeze. He does make his way onto a bit of a challenge, but Dozier is going to put one in his head. Unfortunately for Mike SMG, they are a man down early here. Do they all have the correct names on the CT side? Yes. Well, it's not from. Well, apart from freeze. Okay, so freeze is no. Yes. Okay. Alrighty then. So things going slow here on overpass on the pistol run. We've got a good position from MSL, which is going to allow his teammates to stack the bomb sites. Going to go back to sewer and just keep the rest of the B bomb site covered. So uh, we may see a stack from the remainder here on the A bomb site. Smoke going down. Hellraiser's going to be. Ooh. That, that nade's going to be meaty. Blam. Not. I need a little bit to Kucha, but uh, the push is imminent here from Hellraisers. I love Onomatopoeia. Hellraisers are going to make their way in now onto the bombsite in amongst all the smokes. Pistols coming in, SMF with the first frag, but Kucha and Simple to respond in kind. And an explosive response it is, as now it's just M-S-L coming in. He's not going to like what he finds. Probably going to go back to the toilets, where things were calm, were peace peaceful. But things made sense, because right now he's going to get absolutely bulldozed by the remaining players of Hellraisers. And we go into the next round, so good start for Hellraisers. On the subject of toilets, do you I like a toilets. clean bowl? I love toilets. What? Do you clean like bowl? a clean bowl? I prefer, I prefer things to be well kept, yes. I was, I was testing your age there. It's an Ali McBeal reference. Oh my goodness, yeah, I totally fell because I have no idea. The guy used to have a remote control for the uh, for his favorite toilet in the office block, and used to flush it before he arrived. <laughs> a remote and, then, and then walk in and say, "I like a clean bowl." We can see the T push. <coughs> we saw this recently, I think yesterday actually, and we're they may be uh, taking some information here from previous matches, and they're all going to go here. This seems to be the anti eco strat at the moment for terrorists. We'll just all push long, basically. Uh, safety in numbers, got a wide range. They can get use of all their guns as well. I've got the first frag down. Smoke's going into sight now, and uh, Hellraiser's gonna push to try and cut these plays down. SMF getting a deagle kill though, gonna make it 4 versus 4. Markov with the no 
Nova. His way in now. Two players left alive on the side. Markov going to take down SMF. Puts a buckshot in his chest as he is ready and waiting for the next player. Who is next? It's going to be a silly on to get taken down. Markov just farming that gold. I don't know if you can farm gold, but he did it because he's Markov. I'm sure you can virtually farm gold. You can virtually farm gold, yes. But still, you're not. <coughs> it doesn't really make sense, though, because you have to kind of grow it, right? That's kind of. Grow farm. gold? I don't know. When I think of farming, I think of growing stuff, and that's like if you farm. I don't know actually what the, the exact we'll have definition to, of farming is. We'll I have is. to look into this between games, DDK. We're, we're always, we're always uh, getting new knowledge here Indeed. on our cast. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Especially when it comes to farming gold. Exactly. I do like gold. Angel through to the sewers. And it is MSL who is already in waiting here. But they do have two players, three players, in fact, on this angle. That's going to be an easy uh, push onto the site as they do eliminate these pistols. And uh, already a good start here for Hellraisers. But actually, my XMG is something worth noting is that t their T side on this map is quite strong. And Hellraisers uh, are going to have to pull out obviously quite a strong CT side. Too. It's going to be interesting to see their CT side against this. But Markov, ooh, getting the little double there. Markov is just making that bank. Look at that. 10k already. If that's, he a, that's a clean 10k as I, well. I hope he sticks with it. No oh, small change. I'm disappointed now. I think he. Okay, he just bought up an AK in the Nates. No small change indeed. Is your uh, knife named after your Twitter account? Follow DDK? I don't have a knife, so no. You can rename the stock knives. I don't want to, though. Fair enough. You're an artiste. You're a man of panache. You're too esports to name your knife. I, was, I, I named my knife before it was cool. Now it's not cool anymore. I'm a knife hipster. That nade landed on MSR's head. And these are the nades we were talking about. They were missing uh, from the match. I think it was Flipside yesterday where they got uh, pretty much blown up on this map. Lack of familiarity. But we can see Hellraisers are familiar with those nades coming on to the uh, beach site. Can the TG told him that is a question? Got so many grenades, four of them flooding in into the site. Kucha going to take the first two entry frags as we do see Hunden now working from below. He's going to be able to take down one, but he finally will go down. In comes the ult for Freeze. He's going to try to take another angle as his teammate does get cut down by Dozier. And oh, great flick there for onto Dozier as he starts the engine. But he does have two players left alive. Markov. And simple there, simple for the deep. Oh, great response there from Picks up the Freeze. Kits as well. Plenty of time. Markloff there, ready for the angle. Just a slither for Markloff to spot an angle there to spot the peak of his opponent. It is Freeze who is going to just turn the corner. He doesn't connect the shot. And Markloff will survive with 39 points of health. And that was a very close round, but one that Hellraisers were able to take. And when you're into a pause, it would seem as Dozier, or Hunden rather, requested one. Indeed, we can see Hellraiser's 4-0 up at the moment. Lots of money in the bag. Mike and G still a bit short. We've got a we've got a reboot coming in here for one of the XMG players. So let's see how things are doing at the moment here. Again, it is 4-0 to Hellraiser's. They are on a uh, much less favoured side here. So for, you know, for at this point, four four rounds is really good for the T side. And it you know, I mean, how how many rounds on average would you expect? to win on well, overpass, the way things are at the moment. I, I honestly feel like it's a 10-5 map, um, considering all the innate advantages of the CTs. Uh, the CTs, like, uh, uh, I, expl I was explaining it earlier, before you were here, um, when I was solo, that uh, I really feel like this map has, is very one-dimensional strategically, from a strategic perspective for the CTs, because all the, like, the strategy that we see every team take, because it has, its, it, it, it has so many advantages, is to play aggressively, because there's so many ways to, you can get into some really good angles and positions, and with good uses of grenades and teammates, you can take shots and then fall back to maybe you know. Let's say you're you're pushing um, towards towards um, like from party to, uh, down into like the park down to T spawn. You can then push you know fall back to the toilets and you can fall back to the site. There's loads of places you can fall back safely to. Yeah. So if you've got good use of nades, you get loads of opportunities to force how uh, the T site to you know use their resources, use their grenades just to force you back. And it can really you can maybe even get picks in the meantime and. You can go, you know, you can assault connector. There's all these options for the CTs to create a reac reactionary gameplay for the Ts. So that's like kind of unusual, but that's a really good strategy. And uh, so I feel like that also, in the, on top of the fact that the CTs can very easily get from site to site, 
as opposed to the terrorist, that gives them so many advantages. And I, so I, I feel like that makes it a 10-5 kind of matchup, maybe even 11-4, even but uh, my XMG earlier showed a really strong T side. So that's my opinion. How do you feel, if you have an opinion at all, that this map can be adjusted to better um, help the terrorists find an even half? Um, well, I, th I think uh, it would be to improve rotation times from, from, uh, from site to site, because at the moment, that's the most difficult thing. And it's, it's uh, what is the word? Um, there's a word. Well, it's, it's, it's made worse by the fact that the CTs can move from site to site so incredibly quickly. If, if you look at the disparity between rotation times from CTs to Ts, it's actually pretty Dexterity, ridiculous. Dexterity, maybe? No, no, no. Um, the word I was looking for, it will come back to me. Tyrion um, Lannister. Tyrion Lannister. No, no, no. Not Tyrion Lannister this time. But he would know the word because he's very, very articulate. He is indeed. He's very good with words. He's got he's a, a silvery, he's a silvery tongue. He's a lexicon. He's a lexicon. Does that make sense? I meant leprechaun. Leprechaun. <laughs> What does lexicon mean again, actually? Isn't lexicon like an archive of some kind? Is lexicon is like a... It, well, it's, it's, uh, it could be a synonym for like an encyclopedia on a particular subject rather than a general right, encyclopedia. Right. All right, so he's, a, he's a walking lexicon on, I don't know, fishing, maybe. We can yeah. look into this. Yeah, we can look we into this. We must find the truth, DDK. We, we have to be the master of words. We are the, the ones with... The, the, I, tr I try to be. Sometimes the I get them wrong, but together... We will find the right part. The best thing is when you're when you're like you're saying you know you're expressing uh, something and you're in the flow of consciousness and a word comes out and you're like I just said this word but I don't know what it means and you look it up and it's like it's, it's bang on boom that was that's the best feeling that's yeah, the best indeed. feeling but when, it's a when good feeling when you get it wrong as well because now you've learned the right yeah, one exactly indeed failure is important in our lives this is getting fail deep. fail your way up baby this is getting so deep <laughs> do you know what uh, Bruce Wayne's father said to him. When, uh, I'm dying. When he's injured. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know what he said. It starts with an S. <laughs> he said, what do we do when we fall down, Bruce? We die. <laughs> we get buried and eaten by maggots. All right, so the CZ's not panning out here for my XMG uh, in the, uh, following the unpause. And, uh, oh, exacerbated. That was the word, exacerbated. Um, that was a good one. Um, but, uh, it does seem to be that Dozier is going to be able to take down SMF as well. So very limited damage done by the CZs. Uh, but this is, uh, as you can see, going to allow a buy in the following round for Mike. Two CTs remaining here. 50 seconds on the clock. And let's see, he does have the CZ. So uh, <coughs> he could get some economic damage here for not much cost at all. He spent. So there is hope. He spent 500. CZ and oh sorry, no, he spent 700. CZ is 500 now. They have a lot of money in the bank now, so this is the round where they need to really make things happen. Hopefully, they get out an AWP. Indeed, they will. I'm gonna throw it over, and uh, we'll see if they can get many frags. They're currently. Hovering on one to two frags here. MSL with zero in five rounds so far, so. Need to get back into this game, do MXMG. <coughs> and Sipple was looking for that aggressive play uh, down through the connector, down through that uh, long alleyway, but it, it didn't come. Instead, we're seeing that uh, it's Freeze who's orping from, uh, from Park, so. And they're not going to clash just yet, but there is. There is a Sibion, who is the, the kind of support usually for Freeze in this area. And they're going to actually back away. They didn't spot anybody early on, and, and uh, Freeze is taking a quick quick extra peek there. And slowly but surely, we are seeing Hellraisers make their way up. Kooch is ready to go through the door, though, but uh, look at this SMF and MSR ready for this. They really baited well through the door in the previous round where they opened the door, and somebody peeked from sewers and got the free frag. But uh, it's not going to happen on this occasion as XMG do find themselves up two men at the moment. <coughs> Simple, still with the AWP, so anything can happen here. We've seen what he's capable of. He's going to be half smoked off towards the A bomb site at the moment. CT's just going to have a look. Maybe if they pick the wrong way, they'll open up the site. Hunter's going to jump over the box rather than pick inside of it. Sure, keep him alive for the time being. So just the counter grenades coming in as a. Uh, Push becomes more and more likely as time runs out here. 20 seconds remain. There we go, the smokes are covering the site, but it's not going to <coughs> stop Hunden from taking some frags. In fact, they are made easier by those smokes, and 
Fleet is going to be coming in the back with the AWP, but it's a, a nice entry, but just not quite enough damage done and plenty of time for the rotation. And it's an easy cleanup there for my XMG, who start to get themselves on the board. Hellraiser's already with a quick five rounds, and as good as the T side it may be for my XMG, they are certainly going to have to run a tighter ship uh, lest they expect to lose this one. Seems Hellraiser's have gone for the more economical buy, avoiding the AWP here, which means that they will be, ab they will be able to buy in a few more rounds if things do go south for them. Possibly looking to pick up the AWP they lost in the previous round as well, if things uh, do prevail on this occasion. We have some more banks coming in. Future shoots the SMF down to 60 HP. Uh, looks like we are going to see a considerable B push here from Hellraisers. So SMS on the site there, and they're not really hazarding at a, boot, at a uh, jump spot just yet. And then he's going to come over. I think that was, <laughs> I think that was a bit of a mistake there. I mean, uh, I mean the fire extinguisher right here for this push to, to work. But in comes Mike to be on the defense. Future and Dozier with two entries, and that's certainly going to be it helping massively to get this bomb down, but it is SMF to drop a Kucha. That's going to start to put problems into play now for Hellraisers. If they don't get the bomb down, in comes Freeze with the frag with that pesky AWP. Angel now looking for the shot, but they can't quite get the bomb down. This is all too aggravating now for Hellraisers. It is Dozier who has that C4 on his back, but he can't quite safely do this. His teammate now, I mean, they should peek because now they, they know that they're going to get you know, a, a pick against uh, just one player. Uh, Dozier was occupied, but they didn't go for it, and they're just working slowly onto a pixel of an angle. S SMF going to be going around the slope as Asilian puts the pressure in from above. In comes uh, the all play as well, as we do see Freeze trying to get himself some damage done. There it is, and SMF also going to time his frag in there as well, and the defuse will come into play. As SMF skillfully cuts the right wires. Imagine if you diffused it and uh, and you actually just got it wrong. That'd be embarrassing, wouldn't it? I guess it wouldn't be a diffuse. No, it'd be a failed defuse. That would suck. It would suck. But at least he'd respawn next round. That's true. It's the eternal torment, James. Indeed, it is. The undeath. Orp is back out here for Hellraisers. They are getting a money boost even though they lost the round because they planted the bomb. It's going to be an $800 bonus per player. Actually, a peak here. That's an early frag. What can they do with it from, from now? That was actually a mix up from, from Freeze as well. He, he, it's very rare for him to actually take that angle. He's usually towards A, almost always, actually. actually. So that's uh, going to suck for them. And MSL picks it up instead. The Orp, that is. Always. Markov will take out Asilion. And uh, Hellraiser is once again looking good to continue their reign of terror here, quite literally, as they head towards their sixth round. Asilion wondering what the hell happened there, but uh, he'll have time to wonder as he is going to be dead until the start of the next round. Hunden just trying to hold mid at the moment, try and bring things back into equal footing here. But not going to find anyone just yet. He's going to be in for a nasty surprise when that smoke clears. Doesn't get a frag on Markloff either, and it's going to be two people remaining. Do they save now? They have decisions to make here. Optimus is not going to help MSL here. He's all alone on the bomb site as he hides in the corner. And that's a double right there lining up for him. Beautiful there for MSL. He's going to be holding on, but the grenade comes in and he eats it. It's not really advisable. And he's going to get taken down. So another round for Hellrose. They're six to two actually. They are storming ahead, and it all really came from the uh, the opening pick from Simple onto onto Freeze. And now their economy is uh, looking bad. Indeed, it was uh, another great round for Hellraisers, and they are doing fantastically well here on overpass. Six rounds from a possible eight on the less favoured side. Obviously. Uh, DDK did mention that my XMG are very strong on the T side, so they'll have to be careful that this doesn't happen to them when the roles change. Got some shoulder peeking there from Hunden. Going to find somebody in the mid connect area. It looks like he is going to try and bait for his teammates as well. Going to have multiple people facing here, and they are going to get a frag as well without losing a player. Freeze down to 23 HP. We'll get finished off there by Dozier. Oh, I felt the Juan dig. I felt it. It, it happened. It happened in my mind's eye, but uh, it's going to be Mike Sinji, you know, picking up that that uh, AK-47 and just whisking it on the way towards the defense. It can contribute there quite nicely, as they do peek from multiple angles. Quick uh, peek from SMF, though. He is going to die. Fatal peek. 
as Asilian gets himself some kills with the AK-47, making things look a lot better for his team. It is, uh, he did actually manage to pick up a smoke grenade as well, so I doubt that, <laughs> that will contribute all that much to the round, but it is something to work with. You never know if he's might be able to, to isolate a player with, with that smoke. That could just get him the one-on-one -on -one he needs. Perfectly timed incendiary, and with 76 health, to run through that would be pretty darn painful. Yeah, it looks like he is going to be forced to save there after not being able to get to the site as quickly as he would have liked to, and that will allow the, the terrorists to get into a nice, aggressive post-plant position. But we do have... The T's searching for him actually, and they might find him at T spawn as well. Who's going to get there first? He's going to hold the angle, but Markov is searching for him. Oh, the timing <laughs> is just the way, just the wrong time. Bam. Bam. Frag. We'll save the AWP, that's going to be important there as well. Do you like onomatopoeia, James? I like okonomiyaki. What's okonomiyaki? It's a Japanese pancake that you make yourself. You get, you order all the ingredients, they bring them to you. In the middle of your table, there is a uh, hot plate, or whatever you call it, and you make your own pancake. That sounds good. It's not amazing. as good as on Matapia, though. We'll have to go for ok 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 Okonomiyaki when we're back in London. Okonomiyaki. Mm. Well, you can't eat on a, on a <laughs> on a Matapia, so it's a little bit different. <laughs> All right. It's like the most awkward conversation. Yeah, <laughs> it's not going to actually go aggressive there. It decides to just go balls to the walls crazy, and it's not really going to reward them all that much. Hellraiser's going to steal those weapons away and just absolutely obliterate the offense. And uh, my XMG are really struggling now. That was the offense turned around, but it just didn't happen for them. And Hellraisers, uh, this is the thing with Hellraisers, is that they are probably not, they're probably far from the, the most sound strate team, strategically speaking, probably far from the, the best uh, team, tactically speaking. But when it comes to just the individual skill, these guys are just through the roof. And it can always be dangerous to challenge them. You never know what's going to happen. I wonder about these messages where it says Dozier just saved Angel by fragging XYZ if they are displayed to all players in competitive matches because I do wonder if that's like a bit of uh, information gathering potentially from the CT side based on uh, the nature of, of how that comes about. What do you think? Oh, nice. Well, well, great. <laughs> MSL will look to save this AWP but once again Hellraisers are going to go for the hunt. Dog the Bounty Hunter style, but will H they Have you ever been hunting in real life? No, no. I have, while I have shotguns, I've only shot clay pigeons. Can, have you hit any clay pigeons? I ha of course I have. You think, you think I would have a license if I couldn't even hit a clay pigeon? Holy potatoes, that would be terrible. What do you hit them with? With the shotgun. Shells. Well, I think the spread's doing all the work for you there, James. Terrorists win. But my... No, DDK, stop trolling me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so easy to troll you. You're so, you're so without sleep at the moment. This is the best chance I'm ever going to get mm. to throw you off your game. Enjoy it while you can. All right, well, we have, <laughs> we have a lot of more hours ahead. It's going to be good. All right, so we move into the next round. Of course, the AWP was saved onto MSL. And he's going to go towards sewers, actually, it would seem. He's a dirty boy, that's why. He likes to get down and dirty in the sewers. And he's going to go for a bit of a peek onto Dozier. And oh, Dozier got the first, first slither of the, of the vision of the model there. And he was able to use that and take him down. And they're simple now. Ready. Oh, oh, the CZ. Is that, is that, uh, is that legal? Those dinks. That was explicit right there. It was serious. This should not be a, this should not be legal. Someone call the cops. Someone just just bought a CZ. Okay, so Hellraiser's uh, with three players with the rifles and have lost a couple of weapons. And of course, the AWP is still alive. It's been uh, put onto Hunden now. We can see that Hunden's position is over towards the A side of the map. He's rotating himself. Um, as they are feeling the A push, but the bomb is actually going towards B here, so it's quite an effective uh, rotation as far as Hellraisers are concerned. And Kucha's actually going to be able to pick up the frag as he moves into the site. Bomb is going to be ferried over now, and Kucha actually has a smoke. I think he is the sole player with the smoke, and this would be very effectively used up on the balcony, but uh, he's not actually in position to throw that just yet. Angel going to have to defend. He does take down a Cillian, and Hunden would be well advised to stay far away from the Hellraisers players with his AWP at this point in time. 
Mike SMG are saving again and again at the moment. So we're not going to have the push from the Hellraiser's team just yet, as, as I say that. The bait comes in from Markolov and Hunden's going to have to leg it now as he has been exposed. Let's see if he can save this AWP for one more round. It's going to be 9-2 in favour of Hellraiser's now. This is the shot again. Markolov just uh, darting around. Going to go for a third peak. This time Hunden misses. He is going to be done for, but he does find a connection. That said, it is 9-2 to Hellraiser. So they've got enough money to go for the chases here in the uh, death throes of the round. And Mike SMG may be in a death throes of this game if they don't get more rounds on the board. Cillian got three kills at the moment. It's just not going their way. The park push for freeze. And as simple as towards that pipe pick. Fiery mouth at the moment. And it looks like uh, Freeze is going to fall back there is a... They have realized the nature of the movement of their opponents. Hellraiser is sticking to Sewers at the moment. <gasps> I-40 pressed mouse one, but he didn't. He switched to the... Uh, switched to the knife. He couldn't know. Unless he is, of course, using something. Vaseline. <laughs> They're going to push in now. And... Looking very good for Mike SMG right now. They have a very good and very tight setup actually. And you can see MSL already picking up the first kill, and this is going to really hurt Hellraiser as they weren't able to trade it. They can't, they're kind of stuck in the mud at the moment. It's like quicksand trying to make their way through the sewers. And finally, Angel is going to be able to kind of work their way out of that with a pick, but they've already rotated fully onto the bomb site. And Hellraiser's. Are they going to force this now? They have 30 seconds, so they are really without a choice, especially now as that bomb cascades down onto the ground. Markolov in a position to try to make a pick towards the pipe over here, but still, things are not looking good for Hellraisers as Markolov does get uh, taken out by Hunden. And it's all on simple now against four players with 15 seconds. He may be the quickest man with the AWP on the server, but he might not be quick enough to actually take down all of them in, uh, in time as he is going to go for the save of the AWP. Counter terrorists win. 9 to 3 the score as. XMG, Mike XMG, put another one on the round, but still nine rounds on the terror side. Hellraiser's looking amazing. Indeed, this is uh, really good for them so far, but I believe it is the best of three. Yes. Indeed, so uh, they're not over the line just yet. They did fail yesterday. Can they succeed <laughs> today? We have an AWP on both sides here. Simple, who, who uh, one of those guys where the AWP is becoming an extension of his arm. It certainly is. Kind of like Megatron. And Angel going to take down a civilian over towards the toilets. The spray battle, the wallbang battle. And they are just trying to soften one another up a little bit before I need to MSL with a very timely peek from Suez, and there's no cover for him. Though is here without a man to help him or keep him safe. These Hellraiser's men, uh, men all out for themselves, perhaps as we are seeing everything squared up into this round. MSL is certainly, oh my goodness, a nice little bit of tagging action over there towards Kucha, who does dart back with 72 points of health. And we smoked. It's very difficult for Hellraisers to find a way in. We've got Angel quite close to the eight bomb sites at the moment. We'll try and walk in and probably try and just get a pick on one of the players, but... Uh, they are. Wow, do you see that smoke to stop the jump spots? That's super spot. Yeah, it's good stuff by Hellraiser's that um, cards in the middle of the site is a very common place these days for the CTs to hide. So life will be made a bit difficult here by the Hellraiser. London hiding behind Optimus Prime at the moment. Taken one point of damage and there's the quick pick and now how Angel will uh, play more aggressive. But the bomb has been lost and the time's going to run out here. So Mike and G are going to find another round to add to the board here. Yeah, it's very uh, unfortunate. I really like that tactic to smoke off the, the top of that crate in the middle of the site as it's such a common jump spot to safely be able to see, get information. Not 100% safe. There are ways to counter it. For example... Uh, the, the boost from of the AWPA, we've seen that uh, towards Park, it can be very, very dangerous. But uh, there's, there's other ways as well. But that was a particularly nice way with the smoke. I like that a lot. Just completely just black out the vision. 
Now we've got the T's spread out here. Backing off away from B, going up through T-spawn into the upper part of this map. Going to take a presence in the middle area with one person towards park. CT starting to back off back to the bomb sites here as the round does continue. The bomb has been left in the playground area though. So um, even though they can take, hold it in mid and rotate, they don't, want it, they, don't, they don't want the flank to come in from the TTs somewhere where they may lose control of the bomb. So they've got to keep it in a very passive position at the moment. Now you can see it just following up through park now that uh, teammate has taken over control of that area. We're going to see that boost attempt coming in now. Just players jumping in while Angel gets the, uh, the first frag on SMF through the medium density fiber board there. And uh, there are some steam errors today and a lot of people are suffering with this VAC authentication error. So looks like Dozy is having a bit of that as well. Doesn't mean he's having any uh, ban issues. It is an error with steam at the moment. So hopefully he'll be back soon. And they are trying to get their way in the site, but it's been so difficult. Mike's going to be putting on a very strong defense. But already with nine rounds, the Hellraiser surely aren't to be sweating just yet as the pause is ready to come in to help Dozier out. But MSL going to be just coming in, flanking, and, he's, and the flanker gets flanked by Simple. Can there be a flank of the flanker who just flanked somebody? I don't think so. Unfortunately, that would be pretty fun, but no. So they're going to try to double back with the uh, bomb, and there's obviously no time, so they're going to keep themselves alive, and the pause will commence. So 9-4 to four already, and uh, on the T side of for Hellraisers, and that's certainly an amazing result for them, as uh, their, their CT is actually quite strong. And, and the beautiful uh, part about Overpass for Hellraisers is that they don't really have to make uh, many strategic decisions. They just have to play very strong tactically and just take the basic strategy that everyone uses on the CT side. Okay, well, this game is going to be paused because of this VAC authentication error. And again, this is something that's wrong with <laughs> Steam at the moment, so... We're going to have to um, go to a break while they, we wait for the plays to resolve this. So stay tuned with us, guys, and we will be back as soon as we can.
Hello guys, welcome back to Pacer TV. Um, it is time to resume the match. And it was on a long break and James is telling me loads of funny jokes, which is why I'm cracking up like a pair of idiots. Hello. <laughs> so all the Hellraiser players, um, it seemed more than one of them had that uh, issue with Steam, but they're back, so we should be going into the game shortly. Yeah, Hellraiser's nine to, I think it is four, I think it was. They had a, they're having a really, really yeah, strong tee half yeah. on overpass, so that's kind of amazing to see. Um, it seems like uh, Mike SMG can't quite pull in the CT uh, strategies and well, it's the, f the CT tactics and make it work. And they, they, they've hit this, this, uh, this weird flux of uh, not having enough money to, to kind of feel comfortable to make the aggressions and they're sitting back and then Hellraisers are kind of just uh, abusing them and then, then they get enough money and they're like, oh God, well, let's try and play aggressive. And then Hellraisers just boom, kill three of them instantly and it's, not, it's, it's one of those matches, I think. Hellraisers are just hitting the shots and it's just, uh, it's, it really just looks like their map. It just looks like their map all over. Indeed it does. And I believe another one of them just got disconnected from the server. So uh, I'm wondering if we have any highlights we can show you from maybe the Face It League or something. Well, I have a question for you first. Okay. Earlier, okay, you said leg it, right? You said leg it, which obviously means run away. Yeah. But where the hell did that come from? It's not... Leg it. I know, but it doesn't... You've got to use your legs it's, it's and a, Yeah, but it's a bit ambiguous. Leg go, what? Go, go, leg the get, ground? Get your legs on the go. It's really weird. It sounds really clumsy. Oh, okay, and we're actually live, live, apparently. So they've disconnected, but carried on anyway. Because they are badasses like that, and it's going to be uh, Angel to take two down immediately with the CZ. And that is uh, something painful, considering they're already down a player. So um, we're going to have Freeze joining back into the fray, as uh, we are going to see a 10-5 half. So they are going to be playing the last one of the half there, and that's going to be Hellraiser's going in. Okay, so MSR just needs to rejoin as he's having the steam issues as well. We've had lots of steam issues today, and yesterday as well. We had some steam issues as well. Obviously, yeah, they went. With, they I think they had an update and then they rolled it back or something, more or less immediately. Was it? I think it was something like that to that effect. So, so imagine when Steam updates, all the nerds that are suddenly in turmoil, unable to correctly nerd it up. Yes, I myself are. I myself are. I myself. I'm often raging when that happens because I want to play my Steam games. Yeah. I just hope it doesn't. I felt sorry for, uh, I think it was one of the American lands who had a Steam update come out in the middle of their LAN as well, during a match, as the play got disconnected, so we couldn't get back, because uh, I think they were having difficulty with the rollback feature that is there for maps and so on. It's been worse, though, but not with Steam. But I think the worst things that, that I've seen is when, um, uh, ages ago, this, this, this uh, doesn't happen, this is not like a modern thing anymore, but it used to happen, um, quite often in the beginning of StarCraft, yep. when uh, it's like, oh, okay, guys, it's going to be like Code S. All right, we're going to have to play like a semi-finals of Code S. Boom, update. Roaches now do like 10 times more damage. <laughs> so, so what? But we're actually back into the match, into the pistol round. So things are resolving and just speeding up here as we are going into this match between Hellraisers and Mike's MG. Hellraisers starting off with 10 rounds on the CC half and already up on that. And the push is coming here, is coming in here towards the A bomb site, but the bomb is still staying back, just denying them the information, which is going to force Hellraiser, uh, sorry, X and G. It's going to force Hellraiser to wonder which site the bomb is going towards. They still haven't seen the bomb, so you can see the rotate. They've got two C2s going down now into B, and now we may see the push finally come into A. Mark off of a great grenade on there on, uh, on MSL, and a quick pick onto SML. So now they know where the bomb is. Can Asilion get the bomb down? i have to see if he's able to pull this one off. It, it's actually going to go for it, and that's going to allow Hellraisers to close the distance a little bit between him and... The oh! Oh, that jump shot! That was legendary. It's silly on now, looking for the last player. Doesn't know exactly what Dozier is. He's going to reveal himself, though. And even a flash save, even a second flash. Dozier wants to use it. Goes in. Oh, Dozier's so blind, but he won't go down. And Dozier is going to get himself the defuse. He has even a kit and all the expertise. He's been to the CT training school, CT Academy, and he's uh, learned how to defuse bombs. And that's going to be a nice round there for Hellraisers. And that puts uh, Mike Smg in a very bad position, to say the least. Indeed. If they do go for the full eco here, though, they can buy AKs on the following round because they've got that extra money, that bomb plant bonus here. So we are going to see the $300 and the $500 pistols coming out here, the CZs and the P250s. Coming out, Hunden just going to go with a Glock, so maybe he's going to whip out an AWP later on in this match uh, if they do make it that far. Oh, that nade! And it's the lawnmower coming in to play. Oh, three frags. Lawnmower, I like that. 
I don't know why I was called Lawn Mower. But... Supercharged Lawn Mower. Yeah. It's on, it's on NOS. It reminds me actually of those, uh, kind of the Bushwhacker ones with the like, the twirling bits of plastic. I don't know what they're called. I only know wrestlers called Bushwhacker. Is there a wrestler called Bushwhacker? You know a lot about wrestling actually. There's a tag team called the Bushwhackers. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a wrestling uh, mark. Or oh I was. We must return to this in the future. But now, it's time to get into the, into the round because we're actually seeing the push coming in onto, onto the sewers. And there's not a lot of uh, direct challenging, but it's all the, the wall bang shenanigans. Are oh, they actually going to fall back a little bit as well? This is uh, interesting. So you're going for that big rotation, but let's have a look at the position of Angel here. He has pushed all the way up park, and he may here, if he can conceal his position, he may get some huge frags here. You can see the T starting to walk now, so Unknown will take down a silly on though, but he's only got six bullets left in the Oof. chamber. Gets a massive snap there on Hunden. That is a huge frag with only six bullets left. He is going to get shot in the side of the head probably here though by uh, Freeze. So he's going to bring it back a little bit, but 47 seconds remaining and the bomb is on the floor by the playground. You shouldn't be leaving bombs by the playground. That is definitely Nobody not wants that. Children in C4. It's not, not good. So we're going to see that uh, that bomb make its way through to the connector at the moment. As uh, MSL might just try to find some uh, some picking here into the side. There comes a Dozier surprise, and MSL is going to go down. Doesn't like surprises. MSL, and their future is going to find itself the the kill as they kind of dribble in to the bomb site. I mean, we're, we're just seeing a uh, SMF now. I mean, they're very staggered in their pushes, and and uh, no one really finding anything. Uh, no one finding those one on ones going their way for Hellraisers. Oh, sorry, for Mike's and G. And, and of course, this is going to put quite a, uh, a predict for, for Mike's and G now because they don't have any bank, and Hellraisers are about, basically about to win this map. Yeah, I mean, their only hope right now is, is SMF going huge with the AK here. They've got no CZs out, they don't really have the money to uh, invest in them, even at this stage. Got to try and save for a full buy in the coming rounds. Now raises 13 on the board, three way, three rounds away from the first map here. Let's see what the T's can do. If anything, again, that uh, AK is going to be key. SMF currently walking with backup human meat shield towards the toilet area. They're all in the toilets at the moment. Like the cool kids at school, all smoking cigarettes in the toilets thinking they are the badasses, but it looks like uh, they are going to slowly make their way through now onto this A site. Do they have the, uh, they don't have any smokes really, they only have the one flash from on Hunden. That's going to have to do the job now as they are going to make their way in. We have SMF is going to lead the charge with the only man with the rifle and he does get the first kill onto Simple and he's going to make himself another one. Things looking better and better now for Mike SMG as they're picking up kills, doing that economic damage. Can they get the bomb down behind this? Looks like SMF Basically, the one-man army. Oh, what a shot there, picking up to the AWP, onto Markloff, and now things get interesting for Mike SMG. Is now Freeze picks up the AWP, just handing it off, palming it off to the dedicated AWPer for Mike SMG. Beautiful round from SMF. He's going to get taken down finally, but can his work? Will his good work go in vain? There is a shot from Freeze. He's going to miss, and Dozier will make the defuse, but SMF... I wish I could just hi give him a high five for that round because that was that was balling out of control. We did say he'd have to go huge and huge he did. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough and Hellraisers find themselves one step closer to this first game here. Two more rounds to achieve and they will be taking that magical 16. AWP will be picked off for simple. So that's going to save them a little bit of money, but it is going to be an expensive round for the CTs. You can look at their economy now and see that uh, if my XMG were to win this round then they could get a string a few together, and who knows what could happen after that. Oh, simple. Does get himself a pick with that AWP already down in the connector, and that's going to put a, a definitely uh, going to put a bit of pressure onto Mark SMG. Even though they go a frag ahead, simple being in that connector is really annoying. And so we can see that he could push out a squeaky. He can do quite a lot with that position, and Mark SMG now going to rotate around. It seems. Indeed, the bomb is still in an early area of the map. MSL just going to run distraction, cause two CTs to hang around the B bomb site for the time being. Only Angel going to be in the bank area of A, but look how slow my XMG are going. As simple does take out X, uh, XMG MSL. 
such a slow approach here from the T's. We see there's so many, as you said, there are so many places for the CTs to retreat that uh, it always makes you look a bit slow for And they're going to go in now through the fire. Angel going to be rising from the bank position just to take one frag, two frags, get stopped by Freeze as he switches up the weapon. And it's going to be the plant for him now. Simple waits patiently behind the smoke. Going to flash himself out there. Oh, he's made himself out as a Freeze. And simple now, he knows he's lurking nearby. That AWP, surely not going to put out the CZ. Root as he goes for the jump shot, and he's going to get denied. The uh, lobotomy performed by Breeze there with the AK-47 and switch out for the AWP. And Hellraiser's two rounds away, but my XMG are putting in some rounds now. Indeed, and as we've mentioned, the economy at the beginning of the previous round, you can see what it's like here for Hellraisers. Simple with the AWP, and uh, not much else here for the Hellraisers team. Again, we're seeing these um, guns, these buyers come out once again, where it's an AWP and all eco. We've seen it work as well. We've seen Versus Pro do it. We've seen Hakucha leave the game from another authentication error. Though this is uh, causing some havoc during this match, but. It is an eco there, so it won't be the worst time in the world for it to happen. He's going to leave them. They're another crack in their crutch, though. But uh, at least it wasn't simple. He's going no armor as well, just AWP and diffuse kit. So this will be an interesting round. We can see the XMG team just huddling together. Going to try and uh, keep these guns away from the counter terrorists. Pretty similar to, to pick up this round. Uh, Let's get taken down though, so there's no weapons left alive for Hellray. There's just some uh, measly pistols, and they are I mean, actually taking a lot of damage in this round. And there's a flash. Free's gonna get taken down, and Hunden is left now in a one on one. Angel is the man last standing here. Let me try and refresh the, the overlay there. And we have Angel picking up an AWP. So it's going to be pretty difficult for him to make this happen uh, with that AWP, no armor, no grenades. Does have a kit though. Let's see what he's able to accomplish. Oh, and he's stepping so loud, he's like galloping around. And Hunden is going to hear that and easily pick up the kill. So uh, 14 to 7, and we, I should think, yeah, we'll pause now as there is a CSGO update. And so this is causing issues for players joining the server, and that's not what you want, because without 10 players on the server, the match can't continue. Indeed. So uh, this may be another pause here. Well, I mean, it is another pause, guys. And he's going to have to play around with the rollback feature, as I believe there has been an update released to CSGO, possibly to try and fix this uh, stuff. So bear with us, guys. We will go to a break and be back, hopefully, with the resumption of this match.
Welcome back, ladies and gents, to Face of TV here. We're trying to resume the game now between Hellraisers and MyXMG. Hellraisers obliterating them, just destroying them, annihilating them, doing all kinds of crazy things on overpass. They've got a 10 5 first half. It's pretty good. It's pretty damn good on overpass, uh, on the T side, that is, uh, for Hellraisers. So we're going to try to jump back into the game now and see if things can resume normally. Hopefully that's the case. Do you like my hand gestures there? I was I've just been about on that. to say that was nice. I was practicing that. I respect that. your hand gesture swag. Do you know that the level of coordination that requires? Immense, I'm sure. Yeah, don't, don't, uh, 
Don't deny it. All right. So the IC4 players are not five. IC5, not four. OK, there we go. All right, so let's jump into the match. So as we can see, uh, after the 10-5, uh, Hellraisers are 14-7. to seven. They're a couple rounds away from just winning this map outright. And obviously, it's looking really good for them. The following map is going to be Mirage. And uh, that, was gonna, that was picked by Hellraisers. So this is looking like a great series for Hellraisers. They're looking like they're going to qualify for DreamHack, which is fantastic. It's a major. Hellraisers, they should be at a major, even if they you know, have a situation like last time where they lose to Epsilon 16-1 on Inferno. I know someone who lost 100 euros of skins on that match. That's, that's why it sticks out. And I don't right know there. who that is. <laughs> Not going to name any names, but it'll skip. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hello it then. is only the first map, and they haven't won it yet. They have not won it yet. I've seen them be up 14, up two next to nothing, and lose before. And again, it is a best of three here, so you can't count out my XMG just yet. Simple going to be only going with the CZ75 in this round. 14-7 at the moment. My XMG on the less favoured terrorist side. And we're still going to go through the sewer. He's looking for people. He's hunting. He's hungry for kills. But are the CTs going to feed him? That is a question. He's I waiting for not. the double stack. And Dozier has left the building. This is fabulous. Yeah, so if they do stop the round now, then I guess things are going to get really interesting because we have to reset all the monies and everything like that. So that means... Um, it means we're going to be here forever. That means, that means that I, I guess we should go to a break, basically. Or we can just talk for ages. James, what do you want to do? Do you want to talk? Should we have, should we have a talk, James? I think, I think we owe it to the viewers to have a little chat, shall we? Have a chat. Because, I mean... Oh, my God. There Short can continue. only be so much of going to break yeah. that one can take. Yeah, it's someone, like, someone a, it's like did, our little save. Someone, like our did, little someone, lifeline. someone did make a, a Reddit post yeah. saying, could the casters talk about themselves or how they play CSGO during these, when things like this happen? So we could, we could try that for them. Not talking about how we play? I don't, I don't know. Well, I suppose we could. In what sense? The kinds of ways that we approach practice on a competitive level? Or the kind Why of don't just, we go with that? Just, well, I, I tend to, I tend to just play CS with the people that I like, you know friends who I play regularly with who are around my skill level that I enjoy playing with, and we play against uh, up the five five stacks because that's as close as I can get to the real, in my opinion, the real CS experience. That's like to me is is the best experience without being able to able to actually play tournaments because I just I'm super competitive. For those who don't know, I came from a very very competitive background with Quake, and uh, I was pretty good at Quake. And I played that loads, and uh, thus was good with it. <laughs> yeah. That's how it works, guys. I just solved it for so many people. They're like, damn, I didn't know how to get good. But this guy just said, play loads, and, and now I can get good. I, I've been a spare man for, for DDK's five mans, and, it, and it, is, it is quite nice to have like, just four other regular people that you can play with all the time. Like, that's, that's, that's amazing. Um, Especially when the threat's there, because um, threat obviously is, is highly knowledgeable. <laughs> And it's just, he's great at calling, in fact. I mean, calling is, uh, like, I, I can sit, sit and you know, analyze stuff and, like, you know, say, okay, this would be good, this would be good, and stuff like that. But Threat's just really good at just calling on the spot. And uh, that's, you know, that's a different ball game to actually be able to just make the call straight away because you can't really be wasting time uh, thinking about stuff. You have to kind of have the gut, the gut instinct to know that this is the, the best call in that moment. Whereas, you know, we get to sit back when we're specking matches and be like, well, I can see this guy's moving there on the overlay and uh, the overview, and this guy's moving here, so we should probably do this. And you're not even playing, so it's super easy. But yeah. when you're actually in the match, you've got to do the right calls from only your perspective and maybe using the radar and limited information from your team. That, that's a different ball game completely. So Indeed. He's I, good I, at find, that. I find it's hard, harder to call on, a, on the T side than the CT side. I feel like if you're just, because if, if you're just waiting, for the T's to approach and possibly peeking here and they're looking for some information, it's a lot easier, at, at least at the early stages of the map, than mm. uh, when you're the T side and you have to you have to push. The CTs are going to have counter flashes and so on, and you need you know you need to have a like a lot of coordination there, especially especially when you have like an early team or you're playing yeah. with a mix. Um, I know like in the UK, for example, there's a lot of guys who just who gather together, and it gathers basically when you just have ten people, ten friends or whatever, just people who know each other, or or maybe not. Um, just play random teams, basically. They just pick two, two teams, just go at it. But, but the fact that they play so many gathered, gathers and mixes together, 
they have a certain level of knowledge where, okay, you've got a teammate in front of you about to peek the, uh, the, the corner of long, so you're going to throw a flash behind him so he can peek behind the flash, you know, that kind of thing. So, so uh, those, that kind of work um, allows you to get to a certain level of knowledge of Counter-Strike, but then there's a step beyond that where you need to play with people regularly and, uh, you know, drill strat strategies and so on. But in terms, of, in terms of how I play, I spend a lot of time, uh, when I have time, I don't at the moment, but I, I spend a lot of time offline, just running around on maps, um, trying to work out grenades and so on. Like, if you have a problem, say, uh, you often find people posting on, say, Reddit or other places saying, okay, I keep getting orped on, on, on like, on Dust2. How do I stop it? Well, generally, you, you stop getting orped by denying the AWP vision. So then you have to work out, okay, how do I do that? So if the AWP is mid, you can go in lower tunnel, you can smoke on the Xbox, and that denies vision for most of uh, mid, you know, things like that. So I, so I spend time working on grenades, basically, flashbang, smoke grenades, um, grenades, and they come in really, real handy as well, especially when you're playing uh, pugs, et cetera, when you may not be playing with five. And even if you are, because a lot of players are lazy, if you have the knowledge to uh, basically assist your team in taking, taking parts of the map, be it bomb sites or, other, or otherwise, if you're you know, getting a smoke down on quad, et cetera, on Inferno. A lot of people as well, like if, they, if they're trying to, say, push quad on Inferno and they want to smoke arch, they'll just stand anywhere and throw uh, smoke in a general direction. But then the, often there are gaps left and uh, the CTs can shoot through it and you're basically making it easier for them to kill your teammates. But if you actually figure out, okay, if I stand here and throw this from here, then it's a perfect smoke every single time. You know, Those things do make the difference there. So I spend a lot of time doing that. And then uh, try and deathmatch when I can. I, I can be a bit lazy with deathmatch, but, but uh, it def definitely does help keep your aim sharp. And uh, I think I have some improvement to, to do there. So... Uh, yeah, deathmatch. I try and do free for all, which can be annoying because, um, like, on a on a brutal CS server, for example, if you're doing a free for all um, deathmatch, you'll get shot in the back of the head a hell of a lot. You'll get shot when you spawn a hell of a lot. But you have so many enemies that uh, you have to try and fight them really quickly, which also helps your aim. I aim is one thing I never had problems with because of playing Quake for like a really high level for like a decade. <laughs> so I always had the periods where I'd have been inactive for a few months, and as long as I just Hit it really hard for about a month. Like, like my fingers have grown into a mouse. I'm not even kidding. Like, one of my the the, the bones on my mouse hand is actually like skewed a little bit to like claw grip a mouse. That's actually a thing for me. Like, I played I played through all my adolescence so much that I, I, I mean that I I just I mean aim just isn't a problem. If I if I just grind it out for a week and quake or something like that, I won't really have a problem with aim. For me, it's all about the tactical side of the game. So like the stuff that James was saying. So if I'm trying to improve, I just generally, generally watch demos to get better decision making and then make sure that I know the, how to create like the, right ta like the right tac like the work tactics. You have to know what the tactic is and then you have to go into the server like James is saying and know how to place the smokes and stuff. And that's like kind of the simple thing for me. I just need to, to step, up it, step it up by joining an actual team if I wanted to play, but I don't have the time to actually do a, join a proper team at the moment, so I can't see exactly how things would go in CS yeah. for me. One, but, uh, one nice thing as well with regards to like nades and strats, if you have, it's really hard to motivate anyone to um, do that if you're trying to like make a team or something. If you can get at least one person to just uh, learn some strats with you, so you can work as a combination to say uh, push towards the side and do flashes and nades, etc. It makes so much of a difference. Honestly, it makes the game like 50% easier at uh, the kind of middle ranks of the game, let's say, um, definitely. So, you know, that, that kind of stuff does seriously help your game. Um, also, I, I've recently um, got access to the Netcode Guides website, and, you know, we, you've seen that we are showing some um, Netcode Guides videos on the stream every now and then, actually. We might be able to even show you one now, in fact. I don't know if uh, production can load one of them up, but hopefully we can do that. Uh, to give you an example, but um, those... Those uh, those videos are like worth their weight in gold. Um, they really are. So I know we had some examples, for example, of uh, James. They, they covered versus pro. What approaching All right. mid? Yeah. On Inferno. What were you gonna say? No, it's not important. It's gonna be a really lame joke. Uh, and I decided that, oh, you that that people would think a lot less of me if I made that joke. So I'm not gonna bother. Wow, it's that bad. <laughs> it's that bad. And I said, and I tell some bad jokes, and I'm okay with the use them usually. <laughs> so yeah, you get it. Okay, you get it. Well, I've lost my train of thought, TDK, now, so now it's your time to speak. Well, what else, what else do they want us to talk about? Is this like a, an AMA without the, without the thing? You had like one question. Was it, there was something else you said, like how we play and something else. I mean, I, I play loads, well, I, I play loads of Quake I was, as well. Actually, I was, I was talking about Netcode Guides, but it is also worth noting that uh, DDK also does his analysis videos on the Faceit.com YouTube. They're quite similar. 
some of those sort of things. Yeah, so definitely check those out. Um, he's this man's a brainiac, so they go pretty in depth. In depth, in depth, in depth. On my YouTube but, channel um, as well, 4K DDK is the title. Because because I'm an idiot, and so like when I was making my YouTube account in like 2008, which I was in 4K at the time, I was like, oh, let's just use this name because I can't get DDK. I just put 4K in front of it, and now I'm like, well, now it looks it looks really stupid, and I'm not in 4K anymore. So it's so like if you have like a, a girlfriend or something, or or a boyfriend, whatever, and you like tattoo their name on, and then like a, you break up after a week, and it's like, oh god, I've got their name on my tattooed on me, oh, that was stupid, wasn't it? Yeah, but the same can, thing. It's you exactly can get same. a dog and call the dog that and then problem solves. Call the dog what? The name of the tattoo. Oh. The why dog. don't you get a dog and call it 4K? The, but why would I want to do that? The whole point is that I... Because of cinema. I thought it 4K cinema. No. There's no. I actually did actually make 4K, like all my videos 4K for a while when I had a PC that could actually do that because I was like, okay, now it's like, now it kind of makes sense. No, that's <laughs> <a little> excuse. <laughs> but yeah, it's really, really stupid and I'm generally an idiot, so... But you can check my videos out. <laughs> I'm, I'm, them. Check out I'm my the best videos. salesman. I'm the best salesman. I don't think we heard from production if we can show a Netcode guide video. No. Well, we don't. I don't think they have them loaded up on this PC. So, so we are in Milan right now. This is the old studio that we had before, and uh, that's why it looks different. A lot of people haven't seen the studio before, but I've I've actually sp like lived here for about a year and a half. For I a while. think if he showed, if he opened the uh, file for the Face It 50K League. You might be able to show a video. <laughs> <laughs> but, who knows, but who knows how much time we have mm. left? I know how much time we have left. How much time four we minutes. have left? Four minutes. But that was like two minutes ago. No. We still have All four right. minutes. All right, James. So what else do we talk about? You, you gave some topics. Interview me. Let's go. I'm ready for an interview. Let's go. Why does it have to be about you? Because I'm the best. I'm balling out of control. All right. When did you... <laughs> okay, we've got a video we can show. That saves us from interviewing DDK. Oh. Roll the video. Let's go. of an execution by Vertispo in which they smoke off Big Pit in sight to restrict the CT's vision and allows them to force plant here for lane and get away safely. First, we'll look at it from a distance and see the overview. Notice that the smokes cover all the major choke points and the flashes coupled with that allow the CT's no chance to get kills. Now we'll take a more detailed look at the player's perspectives. Now we'll see the round played out through Neo's eyes. And now to the POV of Taz. As you can see, he guards the only place the bomber is vulnerable to. And now we'll monitor Snacks' roll throughout the round. And as you can see, he's a pivotal player in the strat because it's his job to gauge when it's safe to play. Now we follow Bialy's route for the round. Smoke. Smoke. Throw in the 
And lastly, we'll follow Pasha throughout the round. One thing to note is VP is really cautious about clearing their B push and their Hulse push before going into the strat. This has been Dborn with netcodeguides.com, and I hope you learned something. Hey guys, this is Dborn here with netcodeguides.com. Today I'm going to show you a few options you have when you're in A halls as a T and trying to take the site. Number one would be when they throw this, this smoke here, you're not able to get into the corner here and line up, you know, any smokes or mollies for that. So what you're able to do is you align the corner of this wall with this line here, and you'll notice it gets a little darker across this line. So you can just put your crosshair in that area. And you throw a walk flash, and then a running flash, and you're able to cross with it, and it flashes on your balcony, you can jump out with it. Once again, line here with the wall, walk flash, which flashes anyone, you know, kind of spotting through halls, and if it's smoked, it'll blow up in the smoke, so anyone that's kind of like holding that will be blind. And your second flash will be a running one, and you're able to cross with it, and it blows up below the balcony area together it looks like something like this if they don't smoke it here's the option you have for that what you're gonna notice on the wall here is like a little fish hook so if you just come in this far corner you can throw a flash at it and it'll pop on your balcony and then you can throw a molotov after it the reason being if someone's playing under balcony you flash them at that point they're blind for two to three seconds and while the molly's there they're burning and they don't know and at that point they're running out of the molly you know with low hp and you have teammates up the ramp they're able to trade the kill and you know progress the save from there this has been deep one with netcodeguides.com and i hope you learned something It creeps on black through color glass Through color glass I'll paint out the sun again To say I wouldn't change a thing I wouldn't change a thing
Wrong. It creeps on back to color glass, to color glass.
All right, ladies and gents, we're back and we can resume the match. We just have potentially a few more rounds to play to conclude overpass, which was left at 14 to 7 to Hellraisers, as we are having team authentication issues, preventing players from staying on the server and obviously continuing the match as it, you know, it normally would be con going, which is, which is smooth and without issues, unless it's DDoS. But there isn't. There's just authentication errors. So let's get into the game. I think the players are ready to, to get things going. Um, at least that's what I've been informed. Okay, Dozier crashed again. So that is definitely going to... Uh, it's, it's like we're getting trolled, James. It's like it's all happening. This is... It, it's like at our expense. I don't, I'm, I'm running out of things to say here, to be honest. Um, Steam, please. You didn't interview me yet. Oh. Have you got any videos, production? I don't want to be interviewed, really. I think you've run out of videos. Foreign interviewed Tell me. Tell us about Quake. Oh did, oh, did he? What, in the last... Yeah, he did a grill with me. And so that grilled. It grilled. He grilled you. Yeah, he grilled me. Oh, I can't wait to see that. We should put, I mean, put that on the that? stream. It's, it's. Uh, I think he did ages ago. He did about a year ago, I think. Oh, I thought you were talking about like last week. No, 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 no. no. He he did an a episode of grilled with me like a, a year ago. What's grilled? I don't even know what this you is. You know what it is? It's no. just, it was his first uh, long form interview for, uh, series. Okay. So he's grilled loads of people. There's actually loads of them, and they're really, really good. Obviously, it's Thorin's unique kind of take on on doing interviews. Usually, you know, most people, you know try to keep interviews small and stuff, but, mm. but Thorin, you know, he picks certain people for certain reasons, for certain topics that he's interested in, so he can have like a proper Thorin interview. So it's, it's one of those. And so he asked you about Quake? Uh, no, so. no, 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 it was, it was more about, um, it was more about uh, approach to an an analysis. And okay. Stuff, and stuff, stuff pertain, pertaining to that, and how, how I got involved in all of that stuff and so on. And that was a year ago? Yeah, about a year ago, I think, maybe, maybe longer. Actually, it was, uh, I was longer than a year ago. I think it was like a March last year, actually, or something like that. So how did you appear on his radar on analysis that back uh, then? Because he loves Quake World, and I did loads of Quake World videos and Quake World analysis videos. Okay. Yeah. That's good stuff. So, so what so is what Quake World? Is Quake World is, uh, is Quake One, but the multiplayer form of Quake One. And it's, oh, really? it's really, really awesome and hardcore. And it's, it, 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 it's basically just to Thorin, the things he loves most. Brood War and Quake World. Oh, really? So if you want to, if you want to get him good with with Thorin, you, you can you can uh, say to Thorin, "Oh man, you, did you see that this this awesome Quake World game?" And then sort it out like that, and then then there you go. He loves you. Then it'll be like the thing about Quake World, you know, is <laughs> blah 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 blah. <laughs> Do people still play that? Yeah, people really? play that. Actually, when I I actually started playing it, like people when I started playing it, people had already been comp competing in it for fourteen years. And fourteen I, years. Fourteen years, and I joined the league that had uh, f almost 50 active teams. What, when and was some, this? Some, when of the, was some of the lineups have been playing. Yeah, all these teams have been playing. Well, not all of the teams, but a lot of the players in this league have been playing for 14 years or more. That's crazy. Yeah, it's not. That's amazing. It's really crazy. And they're really, 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 really good because of that. They're amazingly good. Because they've, they've all been playing the same maps as well that entire time. Mm. That's actually kind of like jumping into, like if people want, like were going to watch that interview, kind of jumping into some of the stuff that he asked me, because that's actually how I ended up getting to analysis. Because when I started playing it, um, I was a very top level Quake player when it came to TDM and stuff. And I jumped over to that and I realized how like- Team Deathmatch. Yeah, I, and I realized how many, how, how many years of experience people had over me. And I came to a position where I was in division one, all of a sudden I was like, wow, these guys are really good. And I don't have anyone to teach me. So I was like, I should either quit or try to like see if uh, analysis can trump experience. And that was like a project that I did for ages. And that was when I first got into it. And I realized that the answer is actually yes. Because I ended up beating some of the best. That's pretty sick. It's my YouTube. That's crazy. Like I've, I, I've played Counter-Strike for like 12 years. But that's across more than one iteration of the game. Yeah, well, yeah. it's four, basically. Um, and they've played that one game for 14 years. Yeah, yeah. Plus now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Yeah, some of the players are very very interesting, and uh, but yeah. So if you want to get on Forum's good side, talk about Quake World, your favorite Quake World uh, Forum Four game. Uh, like find a find one. You don't even have to know anything about it. Just just bring it up, and you'll probably know what it is. Or uh, or bring up Breedwall, and then he'll love you. He's coming over tomorrow. He is actually yeah. Indeed. Are you going to try it? Are you going to try it? You should try that. No, because I'd be a fraud. I don't know anything about Quake World. That's the point. You don't, I don't need to know. I'm not even sure if I've even played Quake One. But you don't need to know. That's the whole point. You just have to bring it up, and Thorin will start. Will will jump onto it, and he'll start talking about it. Well, I think I'd rather talk about Counter Strike. Nah, don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. Not on a Counter not, not on a Counter Strike show. I never saw Brood War either. Yeah, Brood War is brilliant. Okay, so it seems like uh, the players are going to give it one last try before they uh, give up and 
and <laughs> go to sleep with failure on their minds. Wow, that was a bit extreme. So it also appears that not only is, uh, is uh, it hard to play the game, it's getting worse because the Mike SMG guys need to sleep because they've got, they got some learning to do tomorrow. You this, know what? This map's almost taken two and a half hours. When I was playing, um, when I was playing Quake 4, because uh, my first kind of uh, professional team was, uh, was Dignitas, and I was playing in a Quake 4 team, and we were really, really, really good. And we had a lot of top players from, uh, actually, Too Good was in my team. Everyone knows who Too Good is. And uh, we, we actually had a really, really top level team. And one of the reasons was because we were already dedicated, and we were sacrificing everything, all of us. <laughs> so I was playing till like 5 a.m. every single night practicing. Instead of go and then I would have like two hours of sleep and go to school. So like, I did that for weeks and weeks and weeks. Dedicated. I mean, <laughs> uh, what I'm, Dedicated what I'm, or incredibly stupid. A lot of teachers were like, are you sick? Are you ill? Are you okay? Like, because I looked like horribly gaunt and uh, like, with huge bags on my eyes. Because I was, I was a bit too competitive. I was a bit too... Uh, I had the your, sickness. Your drive, your will to win, DDK. I'm really competitive, yeah. It's, I, I like that, though. That's a good thing. It's and fun. I think I'm, I'm learning that you are insane. <laughs> he is, yeah. But insane, but you've applied your insanity, which is the most important thing <laughs> that we can take away from this. The, yeah, the best, honestly, though, uh, on a more serious note, I really believe that um, com uh, competition is one of the, the kind of truest and, and best forms of self discovery and ways to learn about yourself in, in, a, in a frame to better yourself. Because you, you, get, this, uh, you get this environment whereby your, your enemies are actually your best friends insofar as they show you your weaknesses. And that, that in of itself is amazing because not only is it really cool to see your weaknesses shown to you, um, it means that you then have to demonstrate a level of humility to then overcome the weaknesses and become better. And, if, and by a, uh, that process repeated, you, become, like a, you can become a badass. That's actually a really nice quote. Your enemies become your best friends because they show your weaknesses. That's, that's pretty cool. And I'll send I, some more birthday cards now. I, I think it's really good because it, it, uh, this is the cool thing. I mean, um, in society, you know, you, you know, you're wandering around. I'm not saying that, like, you know, I'm, I'm some like saint or something. But I've noticed that um, something that really helped me with ego, because I had a huge problems with my, my ego when I was very young. Like, you know, I'd get really, really angry. You know, I wouldn't know why I was losing and stuff like that. And I would feel really bad. You'd but rage. Then, yeah, I would rage a lot. And a Did lot you of smash rage, your keyboard? I, I didn't smash stuff because I had to pay for it. So that was my motivation. But I did notice that the, the th one of the major things for me was actually ego. And th that was, there were two, two facets to why I would rage. One was ego. Another was, was not knowing how to fix it. But that's, like a, that's where analysis comes in, and that's like a different story. But the ego thing is really interesting because this experience humbles you. Like when, you, when, you do, when you're in a competition, it humbles you to, to be beaten down. It reminds you that you've got limitations and that Absolutely. you can exceed those. So that's actually amazing. Indeed. And that, that, that is where a lot of people find a problem with Counter-Strike is they, they say they start a team, they lose a match, they get um, unmotivated because they lost a match. It's like, oh, this was terrible. You, you know, you guys suck and all this. And it's like, oh, these guys are bad. We lost when we played with these guys. And that's the end of the team. And that's, yeah. and that's, and that's something which is quite common, at least in the UK Counter-Strike, because that's what I'm exposed to for the most part, you know, where we've had... Uh, teams form and so on, and that's happened again and again and again. And you fall, you make a team, you lose a team, you make a team, you lose a team. And I'm, you know, in that process again and again, just finding people who are in it for the long game, basically. That's that's like a really really good point. And if, if it's another thing you can kind of go deep into because you get with uh, with competition and with uh, a lot of this stuff. If you if you go really hard and, and generally like you want to get a really to, you want to become a really good player, it is this really long arduous journey and it's painful. It's really painful. You suffer defeats and all this kind of stuff. It's not instantly gratifying at all. Like you don't get there's no magic pill to become better. It's, there's no instant gratification. Not like when you play World of Warcraft, you collect five animal furs, you, you put it into a, to a guy and then boom, you got some experience and new fancy numbers and stuff. It's not instantly gratifying. It takes a lot of effort and grit and determination. You've got to lose before you can win, right? Exactly. And you've got to embrace that, that mindset or yeah. you, will, you will hurt yourself. And but poker's, poker's a great teacher of that. Especially because yeah. especially it hurts your wallet as well. <laughs> you have yeah. to lose a lot of money before you will start to win. And, that's, and that's, it's true of any mm. game. Um, but you know that's a lesson people have to learn. Otherwise, they'll just keep re repeating their yeah. process. Actually, poker was a really great teacher for me um, in, a f in a few ways because uh, I, I, I got coached by a really, really good, good player. But the thing that I, even though that I, I ended up not really going too deep into the world, I ended up learning some very, very important and core concepts when it comes to uh, competition because um, and, and generally improving at things and like a, a mental approach. 
because uh, it, was, it was in poker that I learned truly about outcome um, orientedness and outcome dependency because this is really, really huge, because then it ties into also the sample size of, of games, for example. So as a player, you know, decision-making is going to be based upon, for most people, how they feel about something, their, their memory, because most people don't put a lot of time and effort into decision-making. So you, 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 know, you, you kind of say, okay, well, this kind of worked this time and that time, so okay, let's, let's, let's do it then. Then you start making like, erratic and weird decisions, and you're not a consistent player. But if you put loads of thought into a strategy, even if it work, doesn't work five times, you have to think back and, and say to yourself, Knowing, knowing all the factors and that I knew at that moment, if I was to analyze it, and if I would make that decision like every single time, even though those five times I messed up. A thousand times. A thousand times, because I know that it's the best long-term play, because it's the best percentage play, then boom, I, that's what I should do. And you can, you can move forward and be like, okay, taking care of that, I've, I've, I've isolated that that was not a mistake, and that that's fine. And then you can move on to something else, and uh, you won't get all these holes in your game and slowly, you, you know, find more and more areas as you play more and more, where you kind of work out. But it's a bit ambiguous. This is a problem when you analyze games, is that there's no, it's like, this is why poker is really cool, actually, as an example that you brought up. Because in poker, it's all percentage-based. And it's, it's very much like that in, uh, in CS as well. There's no, there's no numbers like, that say, OK, this position is worth yeah. this much. You can't and solve the game, much. per se, basically. Exactly. There's always a changing meter game in there. It's not just all about percentages, though, poker. You know, I mean, you can play it to that, but there is a, there is a human element, which yes, is yeah, definitely yeah. Uh, part of that as well. So but um, yeah. I think we had a whisper in our ear from production. Okay, the match has finally resumed. Uh, we're going to be live with GoTV in about a minute's time. We'll see how long it takes someone to disconnect this time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, at least we, we had some. We actually had a productive con uh, decision. Uh, decision. We had a productive conversation. I think, which was uh, enlightening in some ways. Indeed. And uh, perhaps interesting for people. But we didn't. We didn't talk bollocks, which is usually what we resort to. But oh I do, do, love, do, do love me some of the it's banter. It's always a shock when you bring out the B word. I'm just never expecting it. But it's, The thing is, is that it's like kind of a good word because it's not actually offensive in any way. But it kind of, it kind of is considered sometimes... To it's almost, taboo, isn't it? It's, it's like it's taboo. Yeah, it's almost... Among, among us Englishmen it's almost and swearing. women. It's almost swearing, but not. Yeah. But I like the sound of it. It's a good word. Bollocks. It's great. It's a great word. I'm going to keep saying it until you get comfortable with it. Oh, it's going to be a while. <laughs> but you have to get away with what you can when you're, when you're broadcasting, because obviously we do. want to keep it PG, so we can't, we're not going to be throwing expletives out there, nor do we need to, because you know what? My mum said to me, people who swear all the time, it's because they don't have a good vocabulary and they should read more. Thanks, mum. You know what? It's I true, though. I respect some, that. Yeah, it's, it has a degree of... I think, I think, okay, I'm not saying you should never swear, but I think there is a degree of truth there that you should... I am capable of swearing quite a lot. Sometimes I have to stop no myself. definitive reason. Yeah. So now, thanks to your mum, I'm going to make an effort not to do so. You know what, actually? Um, this is another thing, because there's been moments where I'm like, okay, damn, I, need to, I should improve my vocabulary. Because I, I think it's, like, it's, quite just, it's just quite fun, because it's, 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 it's nice to be able to express yourself yes. uh, through words. With English. With, yeah. <laughs> or your chosen language, yeah. people. And uh, so one, one little handy trick that I noticed to, to improve my vocabulary. Oh, we'll never know. Print of the game. <laughs> I can't leave it there. I have to tell people it's too good. It's, it's too good. So um, we're going to be into the match, and we're going to see if uh, I we think can, these if we can finish around. <laughs> oh, so Mike's and G are on the wrong side here. It's, it's actually uh, Hellraisers with 14 rounds. Already, Asilian is going to be picking off simple, and it is live <laughs> as they confirm it after a man dies. Finally, go James. All right. So we have an early pick as simple was just ramboing down mid and. We do have someone loitering here. It's going to be Angel in the toilets to long area. Do ignore the messages from Ebot. We do have confirmation that it is live. So we do have the T's rotating through T-spawn towards the B area. We have some peeking going on there in the name of Kucha. He may hear something now. <laughs> in the name of Kucha! In the name of Kucha. Are we going to see Can he get the one, dog, the one dogs? Can I get the one dog? <laughs> He's gonna go for it! And he got it. We're gonna sing everything. But it is gonna be... It is gonna be Mike XMG to make their way in now. And already a frag coming out from Freeze onto Dozier as uh, Markolov makes his way in. Are they gonna do it? It is a double there from Markolov. No mercy to be found from Hellraisers. They're, they're mad. And also sad at the same time that they have to, have to kill so many. 
make their presence felt, but it is a necessary evil as you see uh, how it is able to uh, lose the advantage now. It's all squared up now. And Markov is just going to wait patiently as their time will run out. And it's... Did, are they going to roll back that round? Is that... I'm kind of confused because they're kind of like typing around. James, James, explain things to me because I'm stupid. I don't know what's going on. It's the match point. You're the best. It's You're the, the best, match James. point. It's a match point here. You're the best. And uh, many more to come from Hellraisers. As we have the obvious force by coming out for the T's. Only three rifles on them, one of which is a sniper, two PT 50s I'm going to rush the side here. It's going hell for leather. Gucci does fall down. Not expecting such a fast push from the. Uh, Terrace and it's worth wonders for them as they get three frags here. Only one trade coming in for the CT side. Bomb does go down and Markolov and Angel in an interesting position all of a sudden. I think that we should make singing casting a thing. I think this needs to be a thing. I think you need a glass of water. Are you trying to say that my delirium is caused by a distinct level of dehydration? I think you may indeed lack hydration right now. I assure you, sir, I am fully hydrated. I think your hydration is still in question. Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> you better have a way to prove it, man. You can't just say, James, you can't just make idle claims. You've got to back stuff up, man. You've got to back got it up. I got nothing. You've got to back that stuff up. I'm not prepared up. for this. I'm not going to take a urine test. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm not cool with that. All right. No one should have my urine but me. <laughs> I think I rolled right. the reverse today. <laughs> normally me coming up with the bizarre statements, but hey. The thing hey, is... In fairness, I was talking about urine yesterday, and now today you're talking about urine, so... We're even. <laughs> <laughs> We're 50-50 on the urine. I love me some urine. We're in urine over time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, two weapons safe for Hellraisers, and uh, things are already looking pretty grim for them as Kucha does go down. He is not one of the, the guys carrying one of those M4s, though, and they are playing a very aggressive round, trying to make use of the close ranges. And a simple looking for the Juan Dig won't find it because SMF is all over that with the AK. And we do have Markloff enjoying the, the foliage. So much foliage, the best kinds of foliage. What do you think SMF stands for? Suck my fish? Superman fish. <laughs> I can't come up with my own words. I don't have any words. Words are beyond me and James. So much for your mum and that vocab. I know. She's going to be really disappointed now. And uh, son, I, I, I won't be able to go home. She's going to say, son, I am disappointed. <laughs> and then, who knows, <laughs> then, then, then you're going to both be swallowed by Pandora's box. She won't let me, look, she won't let me in the house now. Oh She'll dear. slam the door and say... You're going to be swallowed into, and taken into another dimension. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that my when family... Nobody can speak here in English. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm already in that dimension, James. Yeah. You should listen to yourself sometimes. Well, <laughs> that was a bit hard. That's, that's I'm sorry. Slap. Will you still cast for me? That slap round the back of the head. What's 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 the problem now? Come on, seriously, what is this? The problem is. Do we still have internet? The problem is. Was it DDoS now or something? <laughs> <laughs> as, as if it wasn't bad enough. That'd be the best. The 420 DDoS is real. I think if we have enough issues at once, everything will work. What do you think about that? I just want to eat some food. The thing is, is that you're not allowed to eat food in the middle of the cast. Look at the uh, it's bad etiquette. Look at the shadow on the balloons. That's nice. Oh okay, yes, so. the the game is live, guys. But there's an issue for Go TV. So who won the round then? Well, we can we, let's 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 uh, let's do this. Let's do the analysis. Let's look at James. the map. Let's let's do the analysis of this, James. Dozy's on 44 health with a P250, and there's four guys left. For my XMG. What do you think happened, James? I think Dozy's going to look at the balloons, and uh, then you're in. <laughs> Our mouse doesn't work just, either. You can't just do this to me. Our mouse has died. Now we can't draw on the map. Everything's <laughs> falling apart here. As soon as the foundations of the building are going to collapse, we're going to die. At least we'll die together, DDK. This is not really solace for me. I, I had so much uh, planned for my eventual demise. I was going to fake my death, actually. Really? And Spoilers. Do, I knew what. Like, you Spoilers. Got, pretend you died on a canoe. And I was going to make it very relevant. Oh, wow. Go to V's back. Now we're 10 minutes behind. I was going to find a way to dive Maybe from too much casting. Maybe someone pressed the pause button on GoTV. Does GoTV have a pause button? I don't know, but uh, I don't think that's a good idea. Oh no, it looks like uh, Dozier did win the round. I mean, lose the round. 
It's not going well. No, it's not. Feeling a I bit mean, embarrassed. There have been so many interruptions, like you can't really. I, can't, I don't blame you, DDK. This is. This is my top. This is my game. This is my. Really, it's really difficult. I'm in my prime to, right now. It's really difficult to c to maintain coherent casting. Do look, Dose is moonwalking everywhere. Can we get an angle of this? Can we get an angle of this? <laughs> quick, quick. <laughs> I'm done. I'm out. I'm out of this. I'm getting up. I'm leaving. Uh, this, this is. This happened to us. We're in Milan. This happened. This happened to us in London. You were trying to get a third-person view, right? <laughs> yeah. You, you, your right. I just wanted to see Dozy moonwalking from a how nice many, angle. How many times did you try and do it? Uh, three times. You're mashing the button, weren't you? Yeah. <coughs> Steam. There's another problem with Steam. There seems to be a lot of problems with Steam at the moment. But this one, if you if you try and press a third, go to a third-person view. Um, <sighs> when we're in a place where it can't show one, the game just says no one discloses itself. <laughs> you had one of those days, James. I hope there were no weird files on that desktop. I, d I, I don't, know, I don't I even I know. I saw you browsing on there earlier. I'm just glad that, that no one's Skype name was in there because that, then they would be a, you know, DDoSable. Why are you giving clues out about DDoS? Everyone knows how to do it. There's probably loads of guides. I didn't already. know how to do it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> what the hell? Are you, are, you <laughs> are you implicating me? <laughs> J James is the James is the only guy who's been DDoSing all along. Oh, you got me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just take off my headset and leave, shall I? I could actually do it. It'd be really funny. Oh, look, the game. My, it's, my it's XMG uh, actually coming back into the game. What if, what if they went into overtime here? I mean, I, this is... this is What time did this match actually start? they go into overtime, James, that means we won't be able to eat for the next eight hours. <laughs> What time did this match actually start? I don't know. We'll I have think to go to petrol station. We we'll have to have petrol station food. Have you ever had a sandwich from a petrol station? I don't know, James. We're in a three-on-three three now. We we'll have to see if uh, how are able to close this. So far, it's two-on-three in favor of Mike SMG. The bomb's going to go down. Let's see if Hellraisers can do this. Already, Simple's going to pick up a kill. He's in a good position over by the balcony, and it's, it is a two-on-one. This could end. It could end right now. I can end it as well if I spam shift something. As a, well, it has to be a number, but, but <laughs> I'm just going to go for the DPS. And uh, he does have cover from Simple, but it's terrible. Simple's cover was terrible, and Freeze is going to going to kill him. Where's Operation Simple's Meat Shield at? I mean, seriously, I don't know. This is this is why I just saw a this is why Hellraisers have loads of overtimes because someone's defusing the bomb and it has no cover. No. Well, this happens all the time, though. Do you think that they just have a like? Where's the, where's the coordination here? I don't think they need coordination. They need to read books, like we do. I don't think reading books gives you coordination. I don't know how you turn pages, James. Maybe, <laughs> if, it, maybe if it's a book on coordination. 